What's happening? Hey, hey, hey good night, uh, Sam Schmidt. Okay, good night. Bye bye. Night. You said good night. Take care. Bye bye. No, I'm good. You said good night. Dad. Just kidding. <laughs> No, that's not what I mean. Because <laughs> he said good night. Be careful, man. You're going to get your wish. <laughs> Anyways, I have a question. Um, I mean, you said uh, this could be relevant to everybody because I, everyone wants to. I mean, I'm in that predicament right now. Everyone wants to um, get married and, and, and um, have kids <laughs> and all of that craziness, right? Yeah, you're asking the wrong guy, man. My marriage failed, but go ahead. No, but, but hear me out. Hear me out, though. Hear me out. Um, because nowadays, and especially in America, um, there's a lot of divorce marriages yes. in America. Uh, I believe Satan has attacked yeah. marriage tremendously, horribly. Yes. Especially in America. My question is, um, is do you think the marriages are are being ruined because of 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 the roles 100%. that are being reversed? Hundred percent. In the West, it's a concentrated effort by Satan to feminize men and masculinize women. Men right. have become effeminate and women have become masculine, 100%. And that's also evident in the gender confusion. Of course, this is a mastermind of the devil. When you make a woman a man and a man a woman, then you destroy the order that God has designed for marriage. And of course, it's going to fail. Nothing will succeed that opposes God's will. Nothing will succeed that defies God and his, his prescribed will. You will fail. You're bound to fail. And we see it because you cannot falsify God's word. You cannot falsify the Bible. 100%. Hmm. Wow. Is, is there a scripture that, that explains? I mean, I knew that Paul was, was even when informing the church. What do you mean scripture? About what exactly? There's a lot of scriptures that talk about the consequences of rebellion. Romans 8, 18 and 32 is the clearest. I mean, so when you what? say scripture, what scripture? What exactly do you mean? I mean like scripture that talks about how the world, uh, world, <laughs> how the world, how the roles will be reversed. Or, uh, or not, how... not black and white. It doesn't come out black and white. But the, the implication is that if you oppose and defy God's order, expect chaos destruction confusion <clears throat> and that's what you have in romans 1 18 of 32 where it talks about god's order in creation and what happens when you oppose it what you do is rampant sexual immorality rampant <clears throat> idolatry rampant chaos hatred suppression of god's truth so you get a list there but the clearest expression of what happens when a woman assumes the role assigned to a man and what happens to a man who assumes the role assigned to a woman is Genesis 3. It's right there. Genesis 3. What, what's, what is the one of the main problems with Genesis 3? Why did Adam and Eve do what they did? And oh, what are we to learn I know from what that? you're about to say. Huh? I know what you're about to say. What am I about to say? Tell me, brother. You're, you're about to say that um, because Adam listen to um eve no not that no. listen no not at all that's part of it that's what god says it's more than that it's more complicated than god saying because you listen to the voice of your wife and ate of the fruit who is who is conversing with the serpent um, um eve who was responding to the serpent eve where was that oh adam was um i guess he was in the garden he wasn't there you sure the text says he was there right next to her really was wasn't eve was the one that went to her the, the husband after she spoke no, to she her. didn't go anywhere he was right next to her it says he, she gave it to him adam who was there next to her it doesn't say she went looking for him in fact when satan speaks he's addressing both of them he says god knows that when you both both of you eat the eyes of both of you will be open and both of you so right there you see the problem adam is letting eve engage the serpent Adam is letting Eve <clears throat> have a conversation instead of stepping in and assuming his role to protect her and also to silence the serpent he lets Eve take over converse with the serpent because Adam became submissive subservient to Eve instead of assuming his role as her guardian silencing the serpent and telling Eve don't listen to him we listen to God that was role reversal right there 
Wow. So yeah. from the very beginning. That's right. That's why God said what he said. It's not simply obeying your wife, because if you go to Genesis 21, God says to Abraham, when Sarah says, send away Hagar and her son, he says, listen to your wife. Listening to your wife is not bad. It's when your wife tells you to do something contrary to God's will, that's bad. But the sin of Genesis 3 is instead of Adam stepping in and saying, hey, what are you doing? What are you talking to my wife for? I'm her head. I'm a responsibility. You talk to me. Yeah, God said, don't eat of the tree. Take a hike. But instead, he let Eve engage the serpent and he let Eve call the shots and he followed Eve's leading as opposed to putting her in her place because she was about to sin against God and stepping in and stopping the conversation. There was reversal of roles right there. Wow. So when, when you're speaking just now, something just popped in my head saying like that's could be a reason why why all these single mothers and and creating all these feminine boys and exactly and uh, feminist i'm telling you it starts from the garden uh, a serpent is much smarter than you think and that he knows if he destroys the family he destroys society why um, dysfunctional parents produce dysfunctional children and those dysfunctional children become our senators become our leaders become our judges and lawyers they become those that influence society and they wreak havoc on society and destroy it. And this, this also goes back to what you're, you're teaching uh, that I was listening to earlier, how, how, you know, we talk about the boss and, and how if you destroy the boss, then a lot of people are going to be affected, uh, affected. So if yes. you destroy, you know, the father of the house, hundred percent, hundred percent. This because Satan is smart. Satan knows human psychology. He knows it starts in the family. He knows if he can destroy God's structure for the family, he will then produce dysfunctional children psychologically, emotionally, traumatized, scarred. And then they become the next generation of adults. And then they create havoc and chaos and destroy society. That's what you're seeing in front of your eyes. All of these adults were the children of someone. And if you go back and you look at their background, I guarantee you they were raised among dysfunctional parents, either divorced parents or abusive parents, something. Because that's how Satan knows to destroy society. I destroy parents. I destroy kids. Kids become the adults. They destroy society, wreak havoc, and, and chaos. He knows. And he, he knew that from day one because what did he do? Notice his strategy. Because people need to read the Bible with the depth that is necessary to bring out all these deep theological truths by the grace of God's Holy Spirit. If you go to 1 Timothy 2, when you have a chance, you can read it on your own. You read 8 to 15. Paul says that Eve was deceived, but he doesn't say that about Adam. Now, let me bring out the implication. I did a session on this, but I'm going to bring it out. And Pastor Leland, don't leave. I want to answer your question. Um, so please stick around. I know it's late for you guys, but hey, we don't always get an opportunity where the Lord Jesus brings us a humble Unitarian, ask sincere questions and get his foundation rocked with the hopes that he'll become our Trinitarian brother. But now, with that said, let me come back to you. The reason why she's deceived, now I'm going to show you Satan's strategy. The implication of Genesis 2 and 3 is God never told Eve directly about the forbidden tree. He left that to Adam. God told Adam directly in Genesis 2, 15 and 17, you are not to eat. But he entrusted Adam with the responsibility of then telling her. The fact that she could even question whether God said what he said means she was questioning whether her husband had actually conveyed God's words correctly. In other words, it wasn't simply an attack on God's integrity. It was an attack on her trusting her husband to lead her. Wow. Do you understand that? So, so that's the first. That's the first attack on the husband and wife. Uh, uh, Satan knows if I can get the wife to doubt the husband, there goes the marriage because it's going to cause chaos. It's going to cause fighting and eventually divorce. So he made her doubt, not just God, but her husband, who was the carrier of the message. So in doing what she did, she was basically telling Adam, she doesn't really trust his guidance and his leadership. She's going to take matters into her own hands. She was undermining her headship, overturning her headship. My body, my choice. That, yeah, that basically. Or in this case, well, you know what? Maybe Adam doesn't know what he's talking about and maybe adam didn't hear correctly maybe you know so many maybes so not only is she questioning god she's questioning adam because the implication of paul's word is 
God never directly told her, don't eat. He left that to Adam. Adam, she's your partner. She's your spice, uh, spouse. You're her head. You tell her. You, you teach her. You guide her. So it's an attack on the husband and wife relationship and trust from day one. Wow. Beautiful. Uh, so Genesis is that. the classic passage to show you what happens to people when the family unit is destroyed, when the woman becomes the lead, the man, and the man becomes the woman and sub submissive and sub you know, subservient. That's what you see in Adam. That's why God got upset. You listen to your wife to disobey me. You knew better. You did not simply hear it secondhand. You heard it directly from me not to eat of the tree, but you went ahead and obeyed her because you chose her and her wishes and her desires over my will. And that's what happens to any marriage when you choose your wife's desires over against God's will. When you know those desires are sin against God and God won't bless it, your marriage is doomed to be destroyed. Wow. But the, the funny part about this, this is the last thing before I go, because I know you have to answer that guy question. But this, this is the funny part about this, is that I, I noticed that this feminist movement has also hit the Christian churches. The females, the, the female Christians are, I don't know if they're not reading their Bible, but the female Christians are pushing this feminist agenda sure. in the churches. Yeah. And even uh, females are becoming you know, um, bishop in a whole church and pastor in a yes. church. I don't know if you can't be you a know. female bishop in a pastor in a church. That's not biblical. But one thing I want to share with Thanks. you, don't be surprised. They're doing it. Everyone does it. The Unitarian was doing it. Unitarian would not allow the Bible to say what it says. He had to explain it to agree with his assumptions. So these women who feel emboldened and have become masculinized can allow the Bible to put them in their place, their proper place, because God doesn't put women in their place to degrade them. Right, their proper place. The Bible has to agree with their view. Women can assume all the roles that men do, and in fact, at times do a better job than men. And that's when they bring destruction and sin and chaos. Okay, that's what you want to do. Reap what you sow. Wow. Anyway, Sam, thank you so much. I'm I'm gonna go on the answer in Islam because I've been on that website a lot lately. It's a beautiful you. website. I recommend anyone to check it out. That's right. And keep praying for our holiness, our purity, our devotion, our ministry, and my daughters, and for the support to glorify the Lord. So praise yeah, God. Been, Good question, man. Been doing that. Thank you, Sam.